this evening, my wife and I are going to an event called Courageous Conversations About Race. It is a monthly meeting, an ongoing conversation about race within Austin, Texas. I believe there are many chapters, so check for one in your own city. Um, but we live in Austin, so this is the one we're going to. It is a monthly meeting held at various churches around Austin. There is a race problem in Austin, Texas. I've been in Austin almost nine years. 10 years ago, Austin was 15% black. Now, in 2016, it's only 5% black. That's a problem. Austin is, is very unique in that it's one of the only cities has the amount of growth that it has, but yet the minority group of African Americans are leaving the city. That's a problem. I've spent five years in education, and I've only taught one black student. That's a problem. I've gone to these conversations before. It's a step in really talking about what's going on, hearing from the community. I do think it would be better if more people knew about these so that you could get more voices and more diversity. Funnily enough, it's usually majority white because Austin is majority white. But I know there are black people here. There's just not a lot of us. Yeah. So anyway, we're gonna go to this conversation and I'm gonna share with you some things that I learned. Hi, YouTube. Okay. Uh, we're at Courageous Conversations this evening uh, to talk about how to address systems of oppression and racism in Austin. So we're back from the Courageous Conversations. I really enjoy these conversations and the opportunity to speak about race in an open forum. But maybe we should explain what Courageous Conversations are. I did earlier, but okay. I did count the number of people that were in attendance. There okay. were 40 white people. Okay. There were five Hispanic people. Okay. And six black people. I think that's saying something. It is what it's saying. It's saying there's not enough black people even at the even at the, the table. Why do you think that is? Austin's population is only 5% black. 50 something people, there's only six black people there. That's excluding the people who are facilitating. It's 3%, it's about 3%. <laughs> hmm. A lot of information was shared, a lot of feelings were shared at this meeting. We are going to share our top three takeaways. My uh, first takeaway would be Joyce, the facilitator, shared, which I've heard her share before, um, but it just really resonated. Was that you know we talk in Austin, there you know the black population is either not here or in East Austin, and she shared that there was a city ordinance in 1929 that said all black people and later Hispanic people had to move to the east side of Austin in order to receive city services. So when we talk, you know, now in 2016, we talk about gentrification uh, and that East Austin used to be the historical, you know, black um, area, but there's a reason that, that that is the case and it's not a good reason. And I think, you know, that's a, that's a problem and we need to know our history. So that was my first big like, what? Someone put that in place. Someone wrote those laws to oppress people and to segregate people. It wasn't just, oh, all black people just want to live over here all by, all by themselves. Like, it used to be that black people were all over the city. My first takeaway was really listening to how people were engaging in the conversation that we were having. As someone who is white, we're hearing 
a lot of difficult information to process sometimes, like white people are oppressors, and that is said not so clearly. Um, but examples that are given throughout the evening really demonstrate how those systems work and how those systems function to oppress people of color. And I think tonight I was really aware of how people in the group um, consistently speak up to try and make themselves or their experiences the exception to that. No, I'm not, I don't participate in that oppression. No, my school didn't do that. No, my family doesn't do that. My kids don't feel that way. Someone said it really eloquently that, they said it much more eloquently than this, but really it was know your role. So if you're white, you're here not to tell other people how to feel about racism because you don't know what it feels like to be on the receiving end of racism. You're here to listen and you're here to understand. My second takeaway was the piece about privilege. You know, white privilege came up a lot. And <laughs> yeah. To be conscious of your privilege is to contribute to the undoing of racism. I thought that was really, really powerful. Um, you can't help with the problem if you don't recognize there is one. So if you can't say, yeah, I have I have privilege. <laughs> if you can't say that you have privilege, then you can't really help to undo what's being done. Preach. My second takeaway was a new word that I learned. Allyship, me, a white person. Uh, what I can do is learn, and what I can do is try and understand the experience of being black in America and read about it and and read authors who are black and listen to podcasts um, by black men and women and to you know, support black business owners um, and put myself in the situation to listen to those experiences. What I can't do is to talk about what I think racism is and what I think that experience is like because I really don't know. So learning to be a good ally and she referred to that as allyship, good allyship. And I really liked that word. My third takeaway is about love. This organization is kind of a faith-based organization. And so we talked about Jesus Christ. They reference, you know, we're called to love our neighbor. I, I think that we are now mistaking being nice and not being mean for love. And I don't think that's the case. If you are not in relationship with a person of color, and that doesn't mean in relationship, that just means in a, in a true friendship where you are witnessing their life and hearing their story in an authentic way and not trying to solve racism, just trying to build a community with other people of color, um, then I don't think you're really loving. I don't think that you are doing enough you should have more than just one black friend or two black, you shouldn't be able to count. I, I think that we need to be truly in community in an authentic way and that is loving, not just, hi, I said hi to a black person and you need to really care about what's going on. That was also my final takeaway and Julia hit all of, well, most of the points. I would say, <laughs> as people in faith communities, Love is not inviting someone to go to church with you. Love is inviting someone to your home. And not inviting to someone to your home just one time, um, but continuing that on. So yeah, I thought that was really insightful. And everything that Julia said, same deal. Liz had a great moment where she shared during the group uh, some really great literature that she has read. Yes. Thank God she's been reading. Um, and so she had the opportunity to share that with people. It was really great. They came up to her afterwards and were asking, and she was Multiple. all like, oh my god, I read. Multiple people came up and asked me. Two books. First one. The author's name is ta Coates. The name of the book is Between the World and Me. Second book. Michelle Alexander is the author, and the book is The New Jim Crow. Also, we haven't read it yet, but we plan to. It's called Just Mercy. Nailed it!
No. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> it's been a long night. Is love. Do, 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 do. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. That was good. Kind of harmonized there. Mm. Mm. <laughs> You're such a rude person. I can sing sometimes. Please, Julia, tell us how was your experience at the Courageous Put Conversations? The mic down, out of frame. How Courageous Conversations? Julia may have told you earlier, but I'm going to tell you better. I'm going to cut what? it. Do you want to hear it from me? This is comment, all being cut. Comment below if you want to hear it from me. God. <laughs> I can do the YouTube. Comment down below if you want to hear from me. All right. I'm, but I'm, be I'm, done now <laughs> so I can add because this is also my last takeaway. <laughs> you could piggyback. You could literally no, say it. You're going to say it all. We just got back. No, I'm saying it. <laughs> we just came no, home. No, <laughs> I'm saying it. We're back from the Courageous Conversations. What is Courageous Conversations? You might be asking yourself. No, we're not. <laughs>